So should I start or like it's recording it's recording go okay okay hey everyone welcome to the dead horse podcast with me tonight are vivek hi and tejas hello and we are a bunch of game designer type people and we are going to discuss some stuff related to video games on the internet very okay so <laughs> So, you you kind of make us sound like uh, Pokemon. We're game designer type. Yeah, like no, I I, I meant to make it sound like old, I'm the same. Tejas has played you know, two like, games in his life: Pokemon and League of Legends. So all the comparisons on this podcast will be. Are you forgetting Dota? I played Pokemon Simulator once. I think that that is a violation of Nintendo intellectual property. But like, it was kind of nice. <laughs> So let's start with Vivek. Uh, Vivek, what games have you been playing recently? I've been playing Spelunky, which is infuriating because I can't get past the jungle level. I keep getting to the last level and dying. And I'm playing Metro Last Light, which is Metro Last Light is the weirdest game I've played recently because it at once it reminds me of the best part of about like modern day shooters and the worst part about. It. Because there are a lot of cool parts wherein the, the levels are sufficiently large where you can explore and that's where all the cool stuff happens. When you go off on a tangent and something that the designers did script happened and then there are these really, really bad sequences where you're just fighting off waves and waves of enemies which are not very well designed. I don't know, it's, it's weird. It's a really good game, but it has some... Uh, it's still hung up on trying to do the VR, this like awesome... Next gen first person shooter. Okay. Uh, like speaking of tangents, Tejas, what have you been playing apart from <laughs> League of Legends? <laughs> nice segue. Um, actually, I haven't played League of Legends in a while. I've I've been watching uh, their uh, their tournament. They they're running their uh, world championship right now. But that aside, nice. uh, most recently I've been playing a lot of uh, Elder Scrolls for Oblivion. It's something I've been wanting to play since I was. Uh, younger and my computer couldn't handle it back then. I would keep dropping to like 4 and 5 FPS when I hit like any location with uh, you know more than two particle effects running simultaneously. So I finally get to play it and it's been a blast so far. I'm just you know, walking around finding stuff uh, and yeah, it, it's just it's just yeah. a blast to you know, keep bumping so into random legal. things and like, so by League of Legends tournament, I assume it means people cosplaying as League of Legends characters, <laughs> professional athletes, and then, like, fighting in yeah, a well, kind see. of app kind of thing. Yeah, what they've done is they've, they've rented out a full uh, of American football stadium, right? Because this is obviously happening in North America. And what they've done is they've set up these giant little uh, foam turrets, and you have these athletes on both sides, right? And they've cosplayed really well. And they run around flinging shit at each other, generally foam rocks, and They're some of them have foam swords. League of Legends. Like, yes, so it's a lot of League of Legends. Not, not, so basically not too different from American football as it is, but... Okay, let's, uh, let's move no, on to... Uh, no, no they, 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 they pause occasionally to, you know, roll dice and just see if, you know, they scored a critical. <laughs> okay, so... so uh, what are you going to uh, I'm actually playing a bunch of uh, Super Sanctum TD. That's like a retro tower defense game I got for like 80 cents or something. Uh, it's pretty nice actually. I think it's quite actually better than Sanctum because it, because it is more focused. Like Sanctum has this weird problem where there's a bunch there's like the tower defense mode and then the FB, FPS mode. Okay. But since you have to have something to do in FPS mode, the towers like I feel are like the tower mode is pretty boring. So you have to do the grunt work in FPS mode anyway. So okay. Super Sanctum TD solves that problem by just making it a tower defense game and removing the FPS stuff entirely, which I think makes it a like much more focused experience. Okay. Other than that, uh, I haven't really been playing a lot of games actually. I played like a bit of XCOM, but I like but like I usually play XCOM, so nothing new on that. Yeah, Speaking same of, here. XCOM. Of XCOM. Any within pre-order starting today? Yes. Yeah. Oh, I wish like, I had the money a, for yeah, it. Yeah, that was a message from our sponsor. Mr. Axis has uh, sent us... Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, so let's move on to gaming <laughs> news. And uh, so what's... So yeah, what's the end thing that's been happening in games? Like, uh, I haven't been reading much of news except like the David Cage keynotes. So maybe we can start there. 
I'm not sure. Oh, I see. I haven't read, uh, watched that either. I haven't read a transcript. I haven't watched that. So you guys have to fill me in on what uh, David Cage said. Okay, so David Cage is, uh, like, the David Cage problem is that the guy is actually a pretty swell guy, like, according to what I have seen. And, like, in He's another time, guy. no, I mean, like, in an, another time, he would be actually, uh, I think, quite appreciated. For example, like, if somebody brings a book to a movie adaptation, nobody sneers at him, and nobody's like, ah, look at this guy, he wishes he was writing books instead. But since video games have this, a weird position in the culture where they are like only a step above graphic novels in the cultural Barely. spectrum. Barely. So, yeah, so most of, so most people have this uh, kind of uh, defensiveness when it comes to like a person like movie stars because they are like the more famous and the more rich people and then suddenly they come in and they are telling us how to make our games. So that, that right. kind of, I think, yeah, is a, so I think that's kind of the, David Cage Especially when someone who's been making games for a long time comes in and endorses getting Hollywood talent, like it's seen as kind of a betrayal among people who are entrenched in video games and see it as, oh, this person's betraying us and going over to the other side now. Yeah. Okay. I mean, it's almost as if like somebody hired like Ken Levine to make a modern military shooter. Oh, uh, you had to bring yeah. Ken Levine into this. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> okay. So, yeah, okay, so like okay. Uh, let's back up. What exactly did he say in his talk? He gave yeah. a talk at the Eurogamer Expo. Just, just recently, right. he gave a talk. It's like it's not what he says as much as his obsession with shoot loops. He actually came up with a term like now. I want someone to come up with a breakfast cereal for video gamers called shoot loops. Like he, that's what I thought it was <laughs> when you first so said he, it. He basically refers to games that. Uh, don't focus on, like, he refers to violent games as games that just have shooting loops, wherein you just go, you shoot a bunch oh, of people, oh, then you see a cutscene, you get some story, and then you go and you, you do another shooting loop of people. And, uh, oh. he talks about, like, he's talking about, uh, how he's changed control scheme and, like, made the game more, and made Beyond Two Souls, which is his new PS3 exclusive game, more interactive, as in, like, the player has complete control over the player character. And then he goes off into a long talk about how Ellen Page is the greatest actress in the history of mankind and how she really gave herself to the role. Uh, but that's a separate thing. Like, his fascination with Ellen Page is... Yeah, is I mean, looking at the footage, like, I was under the impression that, like, the game would come with Ellen Page and then she would play the game for you and you would, <laughs> like, tell her while sitting on the couch, hey, Ellen, go there, hey, Ellen, go there, instead of... Yeah, that might wow. actually be the, the hook of the game. So, yeah, I'm not sure. Yeah. They have a little cloning facility somewhere where they're just <laughs> like pumping out Ellen Pages. Yeah, go ahead. I think we hit a sci-fi concept here. Yeah. Okay, <laughs> so let's move on to other... No, well, let's like, all this being David said, Davis. the thing is, he's a smart guy, and he's doing some interesting things with respect to narrative design. He did talk about how, like, how he wants narrative <sighs> games to flow. Like, there shouldn't be a, a game over state in games that are narrative-driven. Uh, which is interesting. Like, I mean, that a lot of people yeah. do that. But yeah, I don't know that his approach is the best approach just yet. Yeah, like, yeah, I guess, like, yeah, like, his his games are kind of, like, uh, in their own uh, little bubble as compared to the others. So, like, at this point, like, there, there isn't really any, like, I don't think there's much of a surprise as in what Beyond Two Souls is going to be like. Because, like, he did roughly the same thing with Fahrenheit and roughly the same thing with Heavy yeah. Rain. Yeah. So, so yeah, I think it's rather going to be an uh, like a more polished version of those games. But yeah, so so yeah, let's move on to something else. Uh, is there any other major major pieces of gaming news you want to SteamOS. discuss? SteamOS. Yes, yeah, SteamOS. Yeah, that looks um, pretty interesting. I haven't been reading too much recently myself, so I've I've seen uh. The fact that it's going to be uh, Linux based. I've seen the new controller and uh, been looking at the controls, and I, I saw this nice little image that kind of showed you how they uh, mapped uh, the uh, the Portal 2 controls to their controller, and it seems interesting. Like you know, it seems like it could work. Uh, I just I, I I'm waiting for more information really uh, before I really make a call on what I want to think about it. I don't know, like, they've timed this announcement very, very cleverly. Like, 
it's not coming out. I don't know if they they gave a release date. I don't think anything of that has been mentioned. But now, like the people in the market, for a while have been gearing up to get either a PS4 or an Xbox One, and then they make this announcement. And the the kicker in this announcement is like right now, if you look at the launch lineup of Xbox One and PS4, neither of them are that exciting. Like yeah, almost right. none of them. Yeah, plus none of them really has a sort of killer exclusive or yes, like a thing that's not available. Uh, anyway, like I mean, not at launch. At launch, they don't have any. Yeah. Like I'm sure they're gonna have great games coming out. Like six months post launch, in the middle of 2014, it's a different thing. Like Titanfall will be out by then. So, like yeah. Titanfall Xbox One, like, let's say Titanfall is an Xbox One exclusive. But, but it's also on PC actually. Like it's also on PC. It's also on PC. Yeah. But for the console, like until yeah. that point in time, for the cons for purposes of consoles, it's an exclusive. So now it comes down to okay. Why should I get either of those things when I can just plug this box into my TV and uh, you know just play all my all games on my Steam library? So it's yeah. going to be interesting if they can. Yeah, I think the, like, yeah, I think for the North American market, they would like if they had announced something like Netflix is coming to Steamos. That would have been like that would have made them a like a pretty legitimate competitor to the other consoles. Yeah, that's, yeah. yeah. Yeah, as it stands, the other consoles also do a like a lot of the media kind of stuff. Yeah, which like yeah, movies. So, yeah, I mean, I they have Skype. Yeah. They have like they have a lot of cool things. Plus, like the 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 thing is, well, actually, I don't know. You can't compare service wise. You can't compare Steam to PSN Gold or whatever it is. Yeah, PSN Plus because Steam is a great service. But PSN Plus right now, I mean, in the console space, PSN Plus is a much better service than Xbox Gold. You can't even compare yeah. the two. PSN Plus has like beaten the shit out of Xbox Gold. If, yeah, but but with, I think uh, uh, but with PlayStation 4 and them introducing a subscription fee, that might actually change. And next team might move ahead just on the like the merit of not having a five dollar fee a month. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's going to be interesting. I think what uh, because I think the market uh, that these guys are going for is kind of like the 35 plus. This is not kids. This is not 20 to 30 year old. They are going to buy their, yeah. they are going to buy their consoles. But the 35 plus market, instead of buying a console, they might be like, why do I should I get a console when I can just get this plug it into my TV? It's more convenient for me. Everything is in one place, and yeah, most number of games will always be on Steam. I think another thing, uh, yeah, I think one thing uh, worth considering is also that. By the time they launch, there's also a good possibility that they may have picked up a service or may have gotten, you know, uh, gone and deal with someone where they might provide something similar. Uh, yeah. That is uh, that aside. Do you guys know if this? Uh, like, I think I may have read it, but I just want to confirm. Do they have support for a mouse and keyboard on the Steam Box? Yeah, yeah, they do. Almost certainly. Like, right. Yeah. Like, like I saw the uh, USB ports and all that. I was just like, I just want to confirm this, like, because. You know that you know becomes this massive uh, drive. You know a, a, lure, a lure for a lot of uh, PC gamers as well, where all of a sudden you know you don't always need a rig. You can you know get a Steam Box, and I believe they've talked about it being uh, either upgradable or you getting different types of models depending on what you need it for. So both work out really great, really for uh, yeah. you know depending on who's who who, uh, who the customer is. The other yeah, thing I'm very certain about is that, like, at launch, the Steam Box is going to be a shitty product. Like, the fifth or sixth iteration of the Steam Box is going to be good. The first yeah, yeah the that's maybe maybe the second or third. But yeah, the first one is definitely going to be more on the experimental side rather than uh, yeah. the. Okay, so uh, apart from Steam and Steam OS and such, do we have anything else to discuss, or like, should we move on to ASX Universe? Yeah. yeah. So apparently, yeah. like, yeah. So apparently, uh, let me just uh, fill our uh, listeners to this. Uh, so apparently, Square Enix announced something called a Deus Ex Universe, which is like a series of games across multiple platforms, including mobile, uh, PC, consoles, lunch boxes, and what if, and whatnot. <laughs> so yeah, apparently, like, yeah, making a like a regular game isn't good enough anymore. So. So I'm, I'm actually like one of the, the yeah. I mean, I'm like like I'm pretty skeptical about the whole thing, especially after like well, like the especially after how they are treating Thief. But 
I don't know, like it's too early to comment. Like all they have released is basically a single screenshot that's half teal and half orange. So you can't really tell anything yeah. from that concept yeah. art piece. It's, it's, that's concept art, right? It's not an in-game Yeah. No, yeah, it's, it's just concept, concept art. And I believe... It's, it's a sizzle. I, I, I think what they're going to try and do here is basically just kind of have uh, multiple game releases and either have narrative tie-ins to each other, kind of like what Marvel's doing with the movies and now the TV show, or and and or possibly uh, you know even uh, gameplay experiences where you know just as a random example you have let's say a te- uh, uh, a team based tactical game that you're playing on your PC but then on your iPhone you have a base management game that's kind of farmily uh, that you know gives you resources for the other game and just kind of tie it all in. Of, yeah, that reminds me of Mass Effect Three actually. I think Mass Effect Three has an iPhone app that does that. It's- Pretty much. Oh, crap. Huh. Yeah. Yeah, anyway. Uh, yeah, okay. So, yeah, general skepticism about Deus Ex Universe aside, I think we have, uh, like, discussed pretty much all of the uh, major game news. Like, obviously, yeah. we are... Uh, well, there's the fact that a lot of Pokemon images have leaked and, you know, Nintendo's... Yeah, nobody cares about, about Pokemon that. on this podcast. <laughs> <laughs> let's move on. Yeah, so let's move on. Wow. Right, so apart from that, what have, uh, this is our final section and it's a little bit about what we have been working on since, like we don't, uh, in this podcast, we don't do anything without ulterior motives. So our, so our entire motive behind getting you guys to listen to this podcast it's was to tell you. So that Arvin can plug unrest just one more time. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's more or less. Yeah. Because Vivek and I have nothing to plug at this time, so it's pretty much all you, Arvin. Go yeah. for it. Mr. Pokemon hater. Yeah. yeah. So, so anyway, yeah, Unrest is like a game that's uh, not based on the whole uh, like collect them all kind of thing that Pokemon exploits in children like pages. So, <laughs> so, so yeah, Unrest oh, is a man. yeah. So Unrest oh, is a oh, man. <laughs> yeah. So Unrest is a RPG that based in ancient India. It had a Kickstarter which was kind of successful, and then. Uh, from that point on, we have moved uh, we moved quite far in terms of features and stuff. Uh, you can check out more on pyrodactyl.com. I won't uh, bore you with all the details. But yeah, it's, it's like a cool RPG you, that you might be interested in. Check it out. Right, that's it for, for the uh, unrest plug. Uh, maybe Vivek wants to talk a little bit about like the secret project that he's working on. Yeah, I'm working on a stealth adventure game uh, right now. I'm prototyping mechanics. It's a stealth adventure game. I'm prototyping mechanics. I okay. don't know that there's anything more to say at the moment than that. Once there's something <laughs> up and like either of these guys have played it, I should talk more about it. Yeah. Okay. I just. Yeah. Go ahead. Go ahead. No, I was just saying, I kind of, my call blinked out for a bit, and I heard nothing from what Arvind was saying, and then all of a sudden, you didn't miss Vivek much. is talking about, okay, just, okay. <laughs> right. It was probably just, you know, about unrest and how awesome it's going to be. I mean, yeah, whatever. Yeah, right. So, so yeah, uh, the thing that I do know about the Waves game is that it's based in Unreal Engine, so I guess that's something. Uh, yeah, we'll, we'll tell you... Uh, we'll keep you listeners updated to more developments of, on our games front. And apart from that, yeah, that is it for the Dead Horse podcast. Uh, this is this was just a first one, so apologize if anything messed up. And yeah, see you guys later. Yeah, see you guys later. Yeah, consider a pilot run. Okay, uh,